Unless I get another unusual combination of weapons, this is in fact the broadsword run today. Big hits, lots of criticals, very, very slow, it's the broadsword. Even compared to other survival weapons, I think there is a pretty noticeable delay on each one of your hits. Uh, meaning that unless you have the cannot be interrupted by enemy attacks, if you're trying to just go for a regular combo, you know, mash the button as fast as possible, you are really going to be trading hits more often than not. It is really your uh, classic type of survival weapon in that way, and the reason why I usually don't really like using it too much. I mean, sure, the criticals are very easy to get to because it's just, hey, it's the second and third hit of your combo, but even then, I think I would rather go with like a little bit more gimmicky of a weapon compared to the broadsword just because uh, trade and hits. Trade and hits in 5 cell mode is going to be rough because of the whole malaise thing. And if I can avoid that, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> but I did a couple days ago get a comment on the season 1 episode of the, the, the broadsword run that I did saying that this was your favorite weapon in the game and I just thought... Well, first off, I should do this run as an apology for somebody who actually watched a Season 1 episode of the Dead Cells series. But, uh, aside from that, it's like, man, it really has been a while since I've, I, I've actually tried to use this weapon. It's like, usually it's something I pick up for 5 seconds and then sell if I don't have any other better survival weapons. But it's like, maybe there's something to this? I mean, you get a lot of criticals, and it's like a 2 times damage modifier. Hey, you can probably breach enemies pretty easily, uh, and you know, it's just, this is also a very early game type of weapon. I mean, I mean if, you, if you're just starting out with, oh boy, if you're just starting out with Dead Cells, it's like your survival weapons are pretty much limited to, what, the Nutcracker and the Broadsword, because this is one of the easiest survival weapons to get in the game, just purely because all you gotta do is do a couple runs, you'll find the, uh, the... Uh, tutorial... What is their name? Tomb Raider? Uh, having joined the ranks of... Not even the undead, just the dead. And then she uh, gives you the broadsword as a parting gift. It's pretty nice, but... You know, like I said, it's just not really been my favorite type of weapon. So, I think that, yeah, I just want to try to... Really make this thing work today. Uh, how are you going to do that? No idea. I, I, I guess, like, you know, uh, you want to try to go for the full combo, so freezing enemies, but uh, rooting them, you, you know, getting something like a, a, a wolf trap. Would, but even then, how's that all that different from your usual survival runs? I mean, you're pretty much going to be attempting the same sort of strategies anyway. I guess the, the real thing that I was thinking when I was at least starting out the stream that I was trying to do was that, hey, maybe you could get a lot more out of, like, the reworked um, necromancy mutation. Now that it's not something that you take with every single survival run, it's maybe it will be better with something like this if you are planning to trade hits back and forth. The idea that you would be able to heal up a lot of malaise as well as, you know, also you'll heal yourself up to half health means that you can probably go in pretty hard with this weapon and not have it be any sort of issue. Maybe. I don't know. Like I said, it's been a while since I've actually used this thing, so... It's going to be... Well, it's going to be an interesting run. Or maybe it'll just be your bog standard survival run. I mean, sometimes, just because a weapon doesn't really have any sort of gimmicks associated with it doesn't really mean that it's bad. It just means that... Uh, there's not really too much to build around it, and it's just, hey, whatever you feel like, um, like taking, that's going to be the best weapon for the run. At least that's how I see it. Ah, uh, well, in the meantime, did I get, I don't think I got both of the stats yet, so I should probably go get that before I go anywhere else, and then I'm thinking sewers, yeah, go hit up the sewers, maybe like Rampart. If we're talking like early game type of gameplay, uh, early game weapons, early game gameplay, it's let's let's hit up the ramparts. It's been a while, and if you, going through the sewers is certainly one of the more unusual ways that you can possibly do that. So, sure. I mean, besides, uh, a lot of the times that I've been doing these runs recently, it's been just going through the arboretum over and over. For some reason, I think that's the best way to do survival. 
I got I got no no actual explanation for that, but it's how I've been doing it. And then, um, you know, just curious, down in the specialist showroom, how much does it actually cost to get the map? Still a little bit too rich for my blood, but that is something that would probably have come in handy at this point. Oh well, not really gonna worry too much about it. I mean, the other reason that I should be doing the bro using the broadsword more often is because it is your classic type of Dark Souls weapon. It's clearly even patterned after like the the, the Fume Knight great sword too. And, you know, hey, I do like me my Souls games. If you've been watching Darksiders recently, you'll know that I really like my Souls games because I keep comparing it to that, even though that game came out, like, at least a full calendar year before that. So, you know, I don't know why I keep bringing it up over and over. Ah, what can I say? I feel my greatsword is also one of those weapons that is, like, it's neat. It's super cool. I mean... It is uh, just such a huge, gigantic type of weapon, even though I think it is kind of silly what they did in Dark Souls 2, making all of those weapons, like like the Great Sword, for example, did turn into like the Dragon Slayer from, from um, Berserk, straight up, compared to the more realistic type of, of um, size that it had previously. So it's like, I don't know, big weapons was kind of a Dark Souls 2 thing, but even then it's like, you know, you compare that back to the old Dragon Bone Smasher and everything in Demon Souls. It's like, uh, Dark Souls has always had a tradition of real big weapons. Even like, uh, speaking of Demon Souls, uh, there was, there was, um, the Moonlight Greatsword, which was huge and, oh man, <laughs> well. This is what I was talking about with maybe getting the most out of uh, necromancy this time compared to the last few few runs that I've been doing in this update. But uh, yeah, like even the even the Moonlight Greatsword was gigantic. Even though it was like a, it was kind of like a dagger that managed to have a magical I don't even know how to describe it uh, projection of a larger sword around it. Everything was big. They make swords big and larger and. Um, uh, Lordran, Dranglaic. What was... I'm trying to remember all the names of the various Dark Souls areas, and I, I'm completely blanking on it. What was the... What was the place called in... I'm trying to even remember. What was the place called in Demon Souls? And I remember, like, the individual places. I really can't remember. Why is this? Uh, what, why is that? Wow. Double damage mushroom boy? I might take that just because yeah, I did kind of m neglect my boy last time. No, I need to know. Bulletaria. There we go. Yeah, no, I didn't remember that. I thought it started with an A. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, Bulletaria. Man, I remember when people were thinking that, like, uh, the... the uh, when Bloodborne was first introduced that they were going to have some sort of connection to that because originally in one of the trailers they had uh, Father... Uh oh uh oh uh oh <laughs> They had Father um, Gascoigne saying Umbasa. Would have been kind of cool, especially because, hey, you know, being a, um, a Sony property, it's like it wouldn't have been too difficult, I think, to get the... the the rights to that, but at the same time, well, I am kind of glad also that, you know, they're not trying to tie together the universes a little bit too much. I think that was one of those things that always kind of uh, annoyed me with Dark Souls 2 and 3, well, 3 especially, where it's just like, no, you know what, even 2, it was pretty bad in 2, where they, where any time they really try to, hey, is this a point in time that I'm going to actually try to use vampirism? Maybe. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, in 2, whenever they try to actually have, like, clear, obvious connections to the original Dark Souls, it just kind of, kind of came off as, eh, hokey. <laughs> like, putting, um, putting... Uh, it's the former bosses in the game and everything, and, like, just cl very clear references and stuff like that. 
I preferred like the original bits. Uh, okay, uh, that was kind of weird. I preferred like kind of the original bits. Like Vendrick, I thought his character, super great. Would have rather seen like a lot more of him than seeing the old dragon slayer showed up, show up or anything like that. It's like he's honestly like maybe my favorite character in the entirety of the Soul series. So it's like also seeing him get completely uh, torn down in Dark Souls 3 was, I mean, yeah, he was the king of want, but calling him no king at all seemed a little bit excessive. So yeah, and then Dark Souls 3, I think it's like, eh. The, the original stuff, like Sekiro, I was more interested in Sekiro being like an original thing by itself. Same thing with Blood so Bl Bloodborne, Bloodsword. As I was going to say, because I am I am still playing uh, Dead Cells, even if I'm not talking about it too much. Okay. I think what I'm also going to try to do is, yeah, go for... If I'm, I'm going to be trying to go for like some unusual types of mutations maybe attempt and I know this is not usually something that I use at all period but recovery is a mutation get that working with vampirism I don't know I mean this is not the vampirism run yet but I might might at least give it you know this might be a preview of that at least that's the way I'm going to see it for right now I don't know I it's still a run in the making, certainly. Uh, I I don't know. So yeah, it's like I, I think that not having a bunch of connections to prior. Sure. Uh, I think that, like not having a whole bunch of connections to prior prior series is for the best. Like keep it keep them separated, as the as the offspring would say. <laughs> I, I you know that's always been kind of like an opinion of mine for most things, where it's like I prefer like an original type of thing rather than just going with a sequel for because hey it sells better if it's a sequel <laughs> people like sure things and I know that's true even for myself but at the same time it's like I, I don't know <laughs> I, I guess what I'm saying is that I don't begrudge them for always tying things into other series but at the same time if it was my preference I'd like to see new IPs Unless you got a really great idea for a sequel or something like that. I probably could have actually used that. I mean, I even said, like, back in in the the bad... I mean, we're talking about, like, season one type of of videos earlier. It's, like, even all the way back in uh, uh, the Dark Souls 2 playthrough that I did. Which was, you know, sort of a spur of the moment and not very well planned out thing. It's like I was saying, hey, if you're going to call something... Like, here's the thing. If you are going to refer to something as part of a franchise, you know, you can't... It's, it's like, I don't think you should defend a game by being all like, hey, it's a, it's a good game, it's just not a good franchise whatever game. Because they explicitly said it was part of the franchise, so how can you... How can you... Uh, like, it's, take that sort of comparison away from them. It's like, it's, if they are going to utilize that, um, they're going to try to utilize that sort of marketing tactic. It's like, I'm going to compare it to the original game. That sort of thing. Yes, I did that on purpose because somebody said, because somebody said in one of the previous videos, oh, I can't believe that you, that you, uh, keep, like, not getting the, the total kills and you're so close. Yeah? Now what? <laughs> just feel, feel like being particularly vindictive for no reason. <laughs> Against my dear viewers, who only say this sort of thing because they feel passionate about the content that I put out. And yet I repay them like this. I'm a terrible person, but you already knew that. Anyway. Yeah, it would have been so easy to kill that, uh, the bat there too, right? I know. That's why I did it like that. <laughs> oh, ah, well, so much for vampirism. I mean, okay, here's the thing. It would be a lot better to take it later on than earlier anyway. Okay. Good. And especially if I'm using dead inside, because that's when 
That's when issues with... That's when the issues with, um... Yeah! Almost got me there. Healing are gonna start to come up more. For right now, I think I'm gonna wait. <laughs> we, we all know how this area goes. I think I'm just gonna wait for my, um, for my whistle to get back up and then... And then that's when I'm going to start trying to... Ah, uh, that's not good. Come on, get down here. Hell, that was okay. Nope. Ah, man, that's that's a that's a rough area to go through, isn't it? <laughs> All right, I'm back in the sewers, and this time I am actually recording it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make sure you notice if it's uh, if it's got the little red light on in OBS, by the way. Well, well anyway, uh, okay, okay, okay. So this area's gone that so much, much better since last time because I did get acceptance and I got a bunch more defensive focus skills instead of, you know, just purely offensive stuff. Mushroom Boy and Ice Armor. Pushing enemies away as well as affording me, you know, a single hit that gets nullified means that it's a lot less scary to go in real hard with the combo when I'm using the broadsword. I can just um, set up the ice armor or just know that in all likelihood the Mushroom Boy is just going to be pushing enemies away before things really start to get hairy. Which, while good, I mean, I am still in the the sewers here, so <laughs> it's still not going great. But, I mean, do you expect anything less when I make the unwise decision to come into this area? The shocks of my asthmas, they don't let up, let me tell ya. Same thing with the slammers, but the toxic my asthmas, maybe more so. All right, all right. Don't want to go take that cherry because that would obviously get me killed. Do want to maybe? I mean, I really don't want to go for pure damage right now. I think the defensive stylings, I, something like tonic, would also be very good too. You can use that to eat food, and if I take a, um, if I take gastronomy mutation, which I probably will soon enough, I can see that being very useful. I don't know. It's just defensive seems to be the way to go right now just because I how questionable everything else was up until this point hmm striking you know I'm gonna take heart of ice I'm gonna take gastronomy because I d one of the regular affixes that you get on weapons is uh, slows down nearby enemies when they die which means that oh yeah I also got my third one here too don't I um who's Let's go with necromancy. I mean, I was talking it up earlier. It is going to, if nothing else, it is going to be good, good malaise reduction. And that's something I need right now. In fact, in this next area, it might be a good idea to just use a potion charge if things are even starting to get slightly, slightly worrying. I don't know. It kind of depends. Now that I'm, now that I'm out of the sewers, I feel a little bit more confident in my ability to deal with the sort of nonsense that I have to deal with. And hey, at least we're in Warriors since I'm not using any sort of... Since I'm not using any sort of... Uh, arrows, uh, ranged weaponry... Not nearly as scary. However, the Oven Knights... I don't know. Good. Good. Uh, I'm still gonna keep the thing that gives me more stats. Kind of like having as much damage as possible, especially from my old Mushroom Boy, because that dude is a pretty big part of the team right now. Could have gotten one that did two times damage in the last area, but... I mean, it should go without saying, I, I don't think I would survive. <laughs> that's, that, that's about it. There were a couple of uh, runs that I had at the very... Uh, you know, when I was trying to start up the episode that uh, had four times, yeah, a couple runs, I know, that had four times broadswords, and those did not get more than basically a couple feet into the uh, prison depths before I got very dead. 
So even though it's uh, half that damage, I still don't think it's a good idea anyway. Yeah, I know a couple things. Uh, does, does the broadsword, did I just get absurdly lucky or does the broadsword have like extra um, chances for the, the four times damage affix to appear? I guess I'm probably not going to know. Oh yeah, there's a there was a good example of a weird quirk of this weapon where it can actually hit enemies behind you on the first swing. It's very rarely useful, but it is a it is a part of the weapon. <laughs> I suppose I should mention it. If you wanted to do a true challenge run, try to uh, beat a boss using only the back swing. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, I, I don't even know why I tried to go for that. Okay, well, I was just saying, it's like, hey, if things go even slightly poorly, now's the point in time to be using a potion charge, and that's exactly what happened. I don't know why I decided that was the point in time. It's the same thing with Darksiders. I was just bringing up Darksiders earlier. I'll do it again right now, where it's just like, hey, let's try out all of the new, new and weird gimmicky moves that I just unlocked right in the middle of a fight against a new type of enemy. <laughs> Dead Cells is not nearly not nearly that green, despite doing a survival run. But still, it has that sort of uh, aspect to it when I'm just like, hey, let's hit the do the backswing thing. Stop doing it. Stop doing it myself. Hi. And that's why I got Mushroom Boy around. I can't say this guy is not putting the work in. I mean, I neglected him so much last time. I just, I, I gotta really give him props this time. He's a good character that is... And then even though I'm playing riskier than I probably should, it's like, it, that's why I got him in the first place. Okay, okay. This is definitely not the time to be going for the Conjunctivious. <laughs> That's, that would be, I might as well just restart the run if I was going to do that. Okay. Yeah, I got the, I got the cudgel shield because, well, it's colorless, but also, I don't know, maybe the idea of stunning enemies could be pretty good. Either way, I also do just want a, some sort of shield for this run in particular. If I'm planning to be hit a lot, and I mean, I'm not planning to be hit a lot, but y y you know what I mean. <laughs> it's like uh, having that momentary invincibility when you get struck with a shield is something that I, I, I think I'm going to be getting a lot of usage out of over the course of this. Would like to have something, I don't know, if, if I could get like a punishment or something instead, I would probably switch out for that. Okay. Okay. Just got to be, like I said, somewhat cautious. You can get away with just swinging wildly on lower cell difficulty, but not here. Well, at least I do know that worst comes to worst, the necromancy, like I said, is going to be taking out most of the of the malaise that I'm getting right now, because I do have an awful lot of it. Fifty percent healed. Hey, if I go grab the if I go grab the the uh, food from the shop, that's not going to be a problem. I just gotta go basically find the shop and I'll be perfectly cool for the time being. Sure. I'm not gonna begrudge Mushroom Boy for that one. I, I am gonna begrudge uh, Motion Twin for that one. Feel like I should not be getting hit by shockwaves when I am in midair. Okay, that's actually very nice. Also, again, with gastronomy, getting a pretty big buff. As much as I would have liked to, yeah, you know, save that, sell, sold it, and then use the buff that I got for the boss fight. We are talking about the, the concierge, so I'm not too worried about that yet. Uh, maybe go for the spike shield instead. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. I don't want to spend money on that right now. I, I already have enough things that I need to be thinking about buying as it is. Speaking of which, yeah, right over here. 
want to make sure that there was going to be nothing else that I... I want to make sure that I was uh, through the area before I start trying to figure out what I want to actually buy in here. You don't know, maybe there could have been a really good item. I'll, I'll take that over a potion charge if it presents itself. Get the right uh, affixes in there and everything. That's worth more than just one of the potions, which I often don't even use all of by by the end of a run. But that said, when you need them, you need them. So... I really still want to kind of plan that out. Okay, and I'm just going to... Ah, you know what I was going to Just to be sure. I know it's probably not entirely necessary. I would have uh, been able to clear out most of the malaise anyway, but... It is... It, it, you get that peace of mind. If you understand what I'm saying. It's nice to come back to the ramparts now that they have changed it up so that all of the skill scrolls are not... Um, uh, concentrated in a couple different areas. Like the, the ossuary and especially the sepulcher. Can actually go through these places without feeling like you're uh, you're missing out. <laughs> it's a very frustrating thing prior to this, and there were a lot of areas that it's like uh, I just really wouldn't go to because it's like this sepulcher has ten scrolls of power. <laughs> Maybe not literally, but almost. Good. And Yeah, I didn't actually know that you could keep your combo going through uh, blocking with the shield. Okay. So that Mushroom Boy do a little bit of chip damage there. What? Oh, now uh, Mushroom Boy stunned him. <laughs> That's funny. Um, funny, but could have resulted in bad things occurring. Okay, I'm just going to cancel that so that I have less cooldown. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I could probably run into the damage field to get a stun there, but. I think that would probably be a bad idea on my part. Just saying. Good and nope. There we are. Archful usage of the the ice armor too. Actually, let's. What is the affix on this? Oh no! I, for some reason, I thought it caused bleeding or poisoning, and that could have been worth taking. But as it is, not really going to worry too much about uh, just a little bit of extra damage on that. Root grenade is not <laughs> very good. I'll say it. What do you got? Come on, survival run. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. Do I replace Mushroom Boy or the Ice Armor, though, is the real question. Mushroom Boy is... Uh, I'm going to replace Ice Armor. As much as I do like it, I think that this will go a lot farther when it comes to not dying to curses and the like. I can only hope. <laughs> we'll see. Because I am going to be going to a place with a curse right now. Here. Well, I can only hope that that's not... I mean, yes, the, the, the freezing and everything, but Mushroom Boy has been so much more useful in any area that hasn't been boss fights, basically. And even then, he's still dealing some good damage in the boss fights. Here, though, I'm getting uh, damage reduction. I'm getting extra damage. I'm getting stunning. There's a lot of good stuff, is what I'm saying. Uh, okay. I was kind of hoping that might have been the the curse chest, but I'll I mean, I'm not I'm not too broken up over it. I'll get over it. Okay, just that. 
Oh, the faster I can hit the button, I think it's going to be the better. Because although I would have been tempted to take the curse chest right there when there are some less frustrating enemies around here, this is definitely not the time to be trying to take that. Okay, yeah, sure. I'll take that over the cudgel right now. I mean, as much as I do like the cudgel and everything, it's not really... It is not something that I, I would usually want to take for most circumstances. Something like the parry shield, you can't hold it up, but I'm not really working with that sort of build right now. If I did... No, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to wait until I have more enemies here. Unless... Well, this would be pretty easy to deal. I'll give her a try. There should be enough enemies around here to take this out. Mostly painlessly. Hmm. Throw a carbine. Just for right now, to make sure that I can, um, that I'm not going to die. And then I'll probably switch back out for the shield a little bit later on, because that's going to be better against bosses and everything anyway. Yeah. Mushroom Boy did exactly what I was hoping he was going to do. And that's where it gets a little bit more questionable. Yeah, I think that I probably should not be risking it. You get, like, the Crystal Elite or something, and that's when things just go all very badly. <laughs> where things start to... That's where you realize the mistakes that you've made in your life, and you... Yeah? Okay. Life flashes before your eyes, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, that's good. Good. Okay. Uh, I'll continue on with the Alchemic Carbine for now. But like I said, I... Mm, actually, it was pro the, the shield is going to be better against like golems and stuff. I should probably go take that instead. Just to be absolutely sure. And hey, if I don't get hit a whole lot, then I can also sell some of that food for... Um, for... I suppose I can go down here, too. For a big buff, then, too. The buff is a very... Oh, it was a Crystal Elite! Okay, I made the right choice. I'm gonna say right now, it's like, yeah... Would have probably died if I did that. Ah, uh, Mushroom Boy. I love you, Mushroom Boy, but it's just like... They kind of messed me up a little bit there. Okay. Anything of interest? I mean... Well, there's the tonic. Covers it with oil and burns? Hmm. Versus War Javelin. Oh, War Javelin's good, but I'm gonna take this. Yeah, big, big uh, defense, which is gonna be so useful for for uh, if I lose like just about any health, basically. Because at full health, it's not super effective. But if you lose, yeah, just take it. But if you lose like any anything above like 30% of your health, it's like you're you're probably gonna at least be able to tank another hit just with a tonic alone. I do think that of the choices that I have here, that that's going to be the most effective when it comes to using the, yeah, <laughs> when it comes to using the, the broadsword. At least for right now. Who well, no, knows? Maybe I'll get something else uh, coming up soon enough, but I'm not regretting this decision at all. Especially because if I do get like a oil, oil and fire synergy, that will also be very useful right there. Good. And... There we go. Yeah. No, I like what I got right now. The money is obviously a little bit better. Oh, man. Oh, good, though. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Could not have gone any better there. 
Especially because Gastronomy does turn a 50% heal into a 100% heal. So... It is exactly what I was looking for. Now then... Go through here and then... Um, I don't know, it's a little bit worrying seeing all of that, but it's working out. Yeah, okay, good. Exploding Viscera. Yep, this is about the point in time that I'm going to be throwing on that. There. Powerful Grenade would also be good for just pure DPS, but... like, And with the Tonic, I could probably justify taking it. I'm just... I, I like the I like the the heavy turret more. What can I say? Even though it has been nerfed quite a bit in the past few updates, it's still pretty good. Uh, victim slow, critical plus 20, 20% damage. I'll, I'll take it just because it's not like poison is doing much of anything for me right now. I could maybe. Oh man, I'm getting like a 25% damage increase when I'm near the heavy turret right now. 25% um, damage reduction as well. A good item. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have any poison synergy or whatever. I just was using whatever the uh, most powerful version of the... Okay. Of the broadsword I could find was... The poison was just the bonus. Hmm. Okay. And then you, you, and... Start wildly swinging. The, the second hit on this does hit very high above, after all. The swing is... It's... The only thing is that the first hit is not. And that's the one you're usually trying to kill flying enemies with. So... That's where the problem comes in. Boy, I hope this isn't an elite golem. Okay, I'll take it. Then door advantage, followed by very quick. Not too worried about the health right now, at least yet. Ah. Oh well, I'm not, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. After all, worst comes to worst, I can easily just tank a a point of malaise from a, a piece of food due to, due to tonic and be totally fine anyway. There. Deal with that. In the meantime, I'm going to the cavern. This is... I, I'd say that this should be pretty effective in a fight against the giant. Just because, well, first off, the parry shield is going to be. And second off, uh, like I said, the, the upward swing is going to... It does critical damage. And also, you're just trying to get out of going into the castle again, aren't you? What? No! What? How could you even accuse... You know, what are you even accusing me of here? Some sort of, like, laziness? <laughs> well, you're right. The upward swing and the way that you get a lot of time to fight the eyeball will do extra damage, too. Will work out pretty well, but it's just, yeah. Fine, I don't want to go to the castle. You got me. Okay. Anyway. A good start. That's <laughs> what we in the business call. Anyway. This is going to be a lot more tricky, though. Kind of trickier of a needle to thread. But with the tonic, that's what exactly what I'm talking about, where you get that extra little bit of uh, blue health there. If you're down like 30%, it's pretty easy to just tank a, an extra hit with the tonic alone. Does not mean that I want to, but it does mean that I definitely can. Speaking of tanking extra hits. There we are. Nice. A lot of extra uh, damage there too. Oh, yes. <laughs> Effect wore off and freeze. Even without the, uh, even without the... Okay, fine. I'm not even going to worry about this then. Even without the ice armor, I'm still getting some of the effects of the ice armor nonetheless. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I 
as I always say, hey, it's only advantageous to me. Still getting a lot of da uh, cooldown reduction, but yeah, striking a frozen stun slow to rooted is skill cooldown by three seconds, and it's like that's that's way more than what I actually need. <laughs> Anybody else? As soon as I lose the effect here, I was going to say that I'll get the freezing, but I guess it didn't really matter too much. Yeah, I didn't even really think about it too much, but the whole, like, uh, necromancy combined with tonic it actually does synergize well with tonic. When I eventually do that run, I'll have to keep that in mind. Where it's like keeping half health means that you can just tank a bunch of, if things are going bad. You can tank a bunch of hits with uh, with the ton, uh, which with the extra health that you get from tonic, which is good. It's something that you usually don't really think about being able to do at all in a five cell mode. After all, same thing with like not taking too much uh, malaise damage. But again, it's like, you know, having 100% health will probably be... Would probably be a better option, though. But hey, if you're going to be taking something like this, you're going to be taking something like the Scythe Claws, for example. I could see this being a pretty handy-dandy um, synergy. I don't know. Good. And I can just tank my way right through this too. Now, I think I might want to wait to fight that elite, but I am definitely going to want to fight it. And there are probably like other effects, like uh, maybe holding out a shield, like spike shield I could see being pretty good with uh, using tonic. Getting that, um, that revenge damage or whatever you called it. All right, I'm just take. <laughs> Man, come on! Just trying to get like one solid hit in on there. Now send me back down to the elite. This should not be any problem to fight like this, and I can just purely tank it if possible. Yes. And as you can see, I didn't even really take that much extra damage there, or much damage at all for getting hit. So it's like there's some there's some real strats you can come up with. This. Now when you don't have, uh, I, I guess that's why having the the three second cooldown is gonna be pretty useful, isn't it? <laughs> that more than anything else. Come on. Good. Something you can really only do with like that. Uh, I am still regening back up health and everything, so it's not that big of a deal. 26, and I'm gonna blow a potion charge here. I want to make absolutely sure that I'm not living too much on the razor's edge here. It's like you can stay at half health for basically as long as you want to, is if you're using your tonic judiciously, and that's also very useful for again a very slow weapon like the the broadsword, which you know being able to just tank uh, a lot of hits over and over is a pretty useful ability for this. Up to DPS by a lot. I always talk about it. It's, a ma it's the magic missile type concept where it's like the more that you can get hits in, the more damage you're going to be doing. And that's a that's the type of stat that they don't really tell you when it comes to calculating the DPS, which is just the ideal DPS. Ooh, this is going to be rough. All right, well... No, oh, they're so gigantic. 
<laughs> well, that was cool, at least. Okay. Good amount of extra money, and it seems pretty clear where I'm going right now. Although I should probably hit up this area, too. Ah, uh, well. I'll get there after this is finished. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thought I was a little bit early on that parry, but hey, you know, Dead Cells, very generous parry timing. It's not bad at all. That's the exit, and... I might as well at least unlock the... Might as well at least unlock the... Uh, Explorer's room while I'm here. No reason not to. There. Another mushroom boy. 100% on burning oil. Spreads inflammable oil on target. Do I have anything to do burning? I do have... Dare I... You know what? I dare. <laughs> this is... This is what we would call a questionable decision in the business, but... You know what? Everybody loves Mushroom Boy. Everybody wants to see more of the Mushroom Boy. And this is a pretty good combo that I can use with him. So... Yeah, just like let him spread the oil on there, and hopefully what I can do is maybe re-roll the broadsword into getting a... A 100% on burning an oil, because the combination is possible as of now. Carry that. Okay. Yeah, it's like, this is a workable solution. No. And... One more, and then I'm out of here. Oh, I didn't want to blow him up. <laughs> Sorry, Mushroom Boy. <laughs> I'll get you back out in a second. For some reason, I thought that I didn't have him out. Well, hey, it's a lot of extra damage. You understand? If you don't mind uh, making the Mushroom Boy very sad. It's a lot like um, Mario in Mario 64, where it's like... Yes, Mario is invincible when he does have the metal cap on, but he still feels pain. <laughs> Which I always thought was a, a pretty great decision by the part of the developers. It's like, uh, oh, yeah, 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 he does not actually get hurt or lose any health. Well, I mean, he does not lose any health, but he does get very, very hurt by falling into lava. And so many hacks have exploited that so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could have just made like a different uh, animation or something where he jumps out of the lava instead. Like it's rocket powers or something, but it's like, no, we're gonna make him still scream in agony. <laughs> It's a little concept that I love in that game. Anyway. Oh, I was hoping for the parry there. Shouldn't be too sure of myself, though, after all. Oh, yeah, I also forgot that I was going to... That I was going to uh, try to re-roll into burning oil target. Oh, well, it's fine. Roll into a parry. That's kind of the plan right now for the rest of this run. It works. Is it a good idea? No, but it works. You can see Tonic still being quite useful here.
I was hoping to basically get a lot of usage out of it once the crystal phase started, for this exact reason. <laughs> Uh-oh. He actually managed to get off one of his super attacks. I don't like that at all. Okay. Fine, then. I'll actually use a potion charge. You got me, giant man. I didn't want to. But, you know, you left me no choice. Anyway, that should finish it up. There's a malaise infection reduced and everything. Yeah, yeah, hey, probably could have done that without getting hit again. Oh, well. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Good, good, and good. And just skip this area, which is the reward that I deserve. Get 31 uh, survival. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Tonic, of course, doing exactly what I was hoping it was going to in that fight, too. Probably would have been better if I just kept the uh, the the damage reduction and big buff that I got from the, the heavy turret. But again, people like the Mushroom Boy. And who am I to say no? Everybody love that old boy. It doesn't mean I am going to be down a potion charge, even if I buy one from the shop in the next area. Which I should be able to do, I'd like to say. I'll maybe try re-rolling the broadsword once or twice, but certainly no more. Kind of forgot to do that again, by the way. <laughs> but I'm sure you probably realized that long before I did. Oh, dang. Well, this is point in time for this sort of thing. There, and that should throw him into the next phase. Yep. There's that, and then... Nah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that to... Scorpion to fall on top of him. Dang, I didn't hit the tonic quite fast enough. Got that roll at least. Ah, well. This is why I like necromancy and everything is here after all. I think that uh, going with like a semi, like a semi tank build and everything is actually kind of working out. I would probably like to attempt. I mean, broadsword might be the weapon to try and do like a uh, a vampirism run with. At this rate, that just seems like it's going to be the most effective because it, it does good damage, certainly. Maybe combine it with the tonic? Still trying to figure out how to use that. Well. But it's like... Not enough to... Oh, come on now. Oh, it's the, the freezing... <laughs> oh, the, the freezing... Got, got me there. Man. What a, what a horrible way to end the episode. But you know what? <laughs> I think that's... Yeah... When you're talking about tanking stuff, if you don't have that tonic up and ready to go, just what happens. <laughs>